in a day and everything's gonna be okay Get it done in a day and everything's gonna be a okay Welcome to episode number nine from chapter 14. And this episode is going to be one of the neatest in this series because it's something that I find very, very cool. And this only happens in girls. And it only happens in girls because this involves the sex chromosomes. Now, if you can remember from a previous screencast, we talked about the sex chromosomes. I want you to remember that the sex chromosomes, they're de delineated by letters and you have an X and a Y chromosomes. And they're the only chromosomes that are not truly a homologous pairs. Now remember, if you have an X and a Y, you're a guy. Okay, so those are guys. And then if you have two X's, you're a girl. So that makes you a female, okay? It's because this X and Y can pair up, this is what makes it uh, non-homologous. Now, another thing I want you to, to pay attention to is you only need one X chromosome to survive because the perfect example are the guys. They only get one. They only need one. So essentially, every female kind of has an extra X chromosome. So what the girls will do is they will inactivate one of these X chromosomes in a process called lionization, which is named after a semi-famous scientist named Mary Lyon. Okay, now what, ha what do we mean by inactivation is randomly in each cell in a female, one of these X chromosomes is going to be wadded up into a ball and tossed away into a corner of the nucleus. And when it gets wadded up into a ball and it's inactivated, we call that inactivated chromosome a bar body. And if you look over here in this picture, that's a bar body right there. And right here's another one. Okay? So it's, they just wad it up, toss it in the corner. You can clearly see this on a microscope in females. Okay? Now, one of the things that will show you a demonstration of how this chromosome inactivation can occur is in a calico cat. Calico cats, these are the ones who have the orange fur and black fur kind of mixed in together. Now, the fur color on cats, especially for the black color, and the orange color, they're found on the X chromosome. So you need to think of these guys as an X-linked trait, okay? Because they're found on the X chromosome. Duh, okay? Oh. So let's look at these interactions over here on this picture. Here we've got the males. They're X and Y, just like they are in, he in uh, humans. And the females are XX, just like they are in humans, all right? So notice that this gentleman cat He's got an X chromosome with the B allele, so what a surprise, he's orange. Oh. Here we've got a male cat who has the B allele, and what do you know, with the little B allele, that being the one for black, he's going to have black fur. Big surprise. Now over in the girls, we get three different phenotypes. If you're homozygous for the little B, in other words, if you're homozygous for the black allele, that is going to be a black cat. Now, what's going to happen in this chromosome inactivation is at random, one of these X chromosomes is going to be inactivated. So let's say the one on the left is the one it got from its daddy, and the one on the right is the one you got from the mommy. Now, in some cells, the daddy chromosome or the paternal chromosome will be inactivated. In other cells, it could be the maternal chromosome. But because this cat is homozygous for the black allele, regardless of which chromosome it inactivated, it's going to produce black fur. Now over here on this female cat, who is homozygous for orange, same thing comes into play. Sometimes it's the paternal chromosome that's inactivated. Sometimes it's the maternal chromosome that's inactivated. But because she's homozygous for the orange allele, she's going to produce orange fur, and you've got an orange cat. Now, the calicos are heterozygous. Now, this is going to look like codominance, but it's not codominance. It's actually expressed because of um, X chromosome inactivation. Because you'll notice right here, see these little bees? That black color is recessive to the orange. Okay? So... What we see here is sometimes the X chromosome that carries the orange allele 
it's inactivated. So those cells will express the black fur, and that's going to lead to the black fur here on this kitty. In other cells, the black, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the X chromosome containing the black allele will be inactivated, which means it's going to express the orange color. Those cells will produce the orange color, and that's how you get these spots. So it looks like codominance, but it's not. The expression of both alleles is due to chromosome inactivation. All right, so let's show you a Punnett square problem. I hope you guys can see that. Okay, so here we got X with a big B, X with a little B. There's your heterozygous female. Okay, here's your black colored male. All right, let's pick another color from the inside. Okay, X, 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 Y, X, Y. So there you've got your 50% male, 50% female. Now let's fill in the super scripts. Big B, little B, little B, little B, big B, little B. All right, so our phenotype ratio is going to be, <clears throat> with our females, females are going to be 50-50, with half the females being calico, the other half being black females. And in the males... It's also going to be one-to-ones because half the males are going to be black and the other half are going to be, let me phrase this, half the female, or I'm sorry, half the males are going to be orange and the other half are going to be black. And if we could do it combining both sexes, we would get a two black cats to one orange to one calico. See, there's your two black cats, there's your orange cat, and there's your calico cat. So that's how you would do a Punnett square problem that involves this X chromosome inactivation. Okay? So, until next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.